Welcome to the shop my friend Steve here at SKS Props and in today's build video I'm making a Chris knife from Dune. Now not only was Dune one of the most beautiful sci-fi movies I have ever seen but the set design and the costumes and the props were all absolutely amazing and incredibly inspiring. Now not long ago on my channel I actually made the still suit respirator and I'll link this one up above and if you would like to make one I have free PDF files available over on my website that you can download and build right along with me. Now when it comes to the knife, it's a fairly simple prop overall, so how do you make it amazing? And you do that by adding details and the paint job, which you guys know me, I love to paint. And when it comes to the paint job on this particular prop, it's multiple layers and washes. And I'll of course go over all of those to show you exactly how I did it. Now this knife is made completely out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials. And because of that, it's completely con safe and it weighs two ounces. That's right. It weighs next to nothing. And the only reason it has any weight at all is because I put a metal rod in here just for additional stability. Now, when it comes to the foam, my HD foam captures details amazingly, and it's because it's a high density foam for its sure hardness. And so when I scribe all this stuff in with a rotary tool, I use a heat burner, it's able to retain all that. So when I do go back and I paint it, it looks absolutely amazing. Now, I wanna show you what it takes to put this Chris knife together. Let's go ahead and get started. I made my knife template in Photoshop, and I'm gonna be transferring that onto some 10 millimeter HD foam. There's going to be two pieces of foam sandwiched around a metal rod for additional support. The template itself is traced onto the foam with a pencil and then once I sharpen my knife I can cut that out. This channel in the foam which will house the metal rod is going to be removed using a stone bit on my Dremel rotary tool. Some Bob Smith super glue is added to the channel and then the metal rod can be pressed into place. The outline for the knife can now be traced onto the second piece of 10mm foam and some weld wood contact cement is added to each piece. After the contact cement had been allowed to cure, a small bead of Bob Smith super glue was placed all around the perimeter of the knife. Following the outline that I had traced onto the 10mm foam, both halves can now be firmly pressed together. After the adhesives have cured, I cut away the excess foam using a utility knife. I cut away the handle detail from the template and then trace that onto the foam. The two pieces of foam are thick enough that I can carve away the excess that I don't need, and I'm going to do that using a sanding drum on my Dremel rotary tool. I start off with a coarse sanding drum to remove as much material as possible before switching over to a smooth sanding drum and a stone bit. To make the lines on the handle detail crisper, I'm going to be using a chisel bit on my heat tool. Now remember my friends, whenever you're heating up foam, you see that smoke coming off of it, that is not good for you, so make sure to do this in a well ventilated area and always wear your respirator. I also use my heat tool to scribe some lines into the handle before I switch over to a smooth sanding drum to remove that foam. This gives me an idea of how much foam to remove and then I can always go back in with my heat tool to redefine those lines. Making sure to have a super sharp point on my pencil, I can now poke holes through my template onto the foam. This will give me an indication of the lines that I need to scribe into the blade. I use the chisel and my heat tool to follow these lines, and again, this process doesn't need to be perfect. We're etching this onto a sandworm's tooth. For the smaller shapes, I switched over to a detail point, and this really allowed me to control how much of the foam was scorched or removed. This same detail point was also used to help scribe the thicker striations into the base of the blade. I used my heat gun to seal the foam of the handle before I started transferring over the script. Once again, using that detail tip, I'm loosely transcribing the script. I want the detail here, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is for cosplay. And from six feet away, this detail is going to look fantastic. Switching over to a half round bit, I apply a hammered metal texture to the handle detail. Now these appear more dramatic because of the color, but once it's all painted, it will all be subdued. To help strengthen the tip of the blade, I'm once again going to use my super glue technique. This is where I apply super glue directly to the unsealed foam. I brush it onto the surface with a scrap piece and then spray some accelerator onto the glue. This process will harden the foam and then I can use a sanding sponge to dull it down. Using a template, I draw some half circles onto the handle. These lines are going to be scored using my hobby knife. Adding heat to the foam allows these cuts to open up, which gives you nice crisp lines.
To seal my knife, I'm going to be covering it with a couple of light coats of Plasti Dip. After the Plasti Dip had cured, I can now start to base coat the knife, and I'm going to be using Liquitex Heavy Body Unbleached Titanium. This is hand painted onto the blade directionally, building it up more and more layer by layer. After the paint layers have been built up, I'm going to seal this layer using some Valspar Flat. This is going to allow me to scrub and do washes without destroying the base layer. For the next step, I'm going to be building up colors using Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, and Bronze Yellow. I start off by dry brushing the Bronze Yellow onto the unbleached titanium. Then using a damp paper towel, I'm able to scrub this off, leaving the paint down into the striations that I had dremeled into the foam. To build up the darker colors at the base, I'm going to start by mixing some Burnt Sienna with the Mars Black. Just like the Bronze Yellow, this mixture is feathered down the surface of the blade using a dry brush. For my darkest layer, I add even more Mars Black into the mixture, and I still feather this down the blade. Once all the layers are down, I can go back with my damp paper towel and scrub through the layers down to the unbleached surface. This same dark brown mixture was also applied to the root of the tooth at the base of the handle. A hairdryer is used to speed up the dry time before more layers can be added on. Liquitex parchment is applied to the very tip of the blade and all of this will be sealed with the Kryolan matte spray once again. After the matte sealant had dried, a wash of Mars Black was applied to the entire surface, making sure it runs into the details before the excess is wiped away. One final layer of Liquitex parchment was added to the very tip of the blade, and then a damp paper towel is used to wipe away the excess paint until I got the texture that I wanted. Using a detail brush and some watered down Mars Black, I can now add paint to all of the lines that I had scribed into the foam blade earlier. Burnt Sienna was used to highlight the handle and more Mars Black was painted into the recesses. Liquitex brand iridescent rich silver can now be dry brushed over the metal sections of the handle. Now remember with metallics I don't add any water to this process because I don't want it to run down into the details. I add a small amount of raw sienna into the silver just to give it a little bit of a rusty color change. After that had all dried, a final highlight of Liquitex iridescent rich silver could then be applied. Just like the scribe details on the blade, the lettering that's on the handle was also filled in using some watered down Mars Black. To make it look as though this tooth has been sharpened and polished, I'm going to be using some Vallejo brand gloss varnish. This varnish is applied by brush specifically to the tip and then I feather it down the length of the blade. I add a very small amount to the handle and you can see it catches the light just right to show off all the striations. So you all can see the basic steps that I took to put together my own Chris knife from Dune. And again, it's just foam. So it's extremely lightweight. It's con safe. The materials are readily available. You can go through any of the links that are in the description section or those that are on my website to pick up some HD foam from Blick. Now, hopefully a video like this is inspiring to you because I'd love to see more people tackle this particular project or maybe a still suit respirator mask to go along with it. And if you are building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.